What's up everyone on YouTube? I'm Michael Jade and you are watching my channel. Alright, before we get into today's video, please hit the like and subscribe button if you haven't already or even hit the bell so you can get notified. I am releasing drum cover videos or trying to release drum videos every Wednesday at noon. So if you want to see more content like this, just hit that little button down there. Thank you guys so much for your support. It means the world to me. Okay, full stop. If you are not a drum gear nerd, this video is probably not for you. So we're going to just take a moment for uh, anyone that is not a drum nerd. We're going to let you guys kind of click away from the video. Just Moment of silence for those guys. Okay, if you're still here, that means you are a drum nerd like me. Nerd! 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 I think this is a video that a lot of you out there have been patiently waiting for. This is going to be my comprehensive studio tour and drum kit rig rundowns. I'm gonna just go through my entire studio with you guys and show you uh, going into this year what it is I am using and uh, just kind of take a deep dive with you guys. We're gonna nerd out a lot here on a lot of my equipment. I will also kind of towards the end of the video go through some frequently asked questions. So stick around for that, but I am literally going to just take my phone and we're gonna walk around this room and I'm gonna go into what I use so you're gonna see some serious shit all right guys this is my drum room studio mofo studio we're just gonna go ahead and get started on this shelf right here up top you're gonna see my pearl form snare it kind of goes with that pearl form kit that is what i would consider my live gigging kit i only paid 150 bucks for it so it's uh, it's definitely meant to be abused and taken into divey gig bar situations and rehearsals and things you wouldn't want to necessarily take a more expensive drum kit out to on from there this is my pearl midtown pocket kit i just recently did an unboxing video of this, taken it out a few times since then. And as you can see, I've got some, some different heads on it than what it originally came with. Also got a nice porthole here, but this kit is awesome. I really hope to be using it later this year. Maybe going on from there, this is my 1967 Ludwig White Marine Pearl Hollywood kit. This obviously, as you can see, started off life as a regular three piece kit and somewhere around 1970, I, I think. This 12 by eight olive badge Tom was added onto the kit. See, they just added a, a regular Tom holder to the bass drum, so it's a bit of a hodgepodge kit. It is very sentimental to me. I greatly appreciate it. It was given to me by a drumming friend of mine by the name of Tommy Taylor. It was his kit for a long time. It's a great vintage drum kit. As you can see, new old stock heads. Muffling is very minimal. I'm using two felt strips on either side of the bass drum head. Cotton balls inside, but it sounds pretty good. Uh, as you can see over here, I just have a, a Tama Classic pedal. Um, and from there, we're gonna mosey over here. We're gonna start up top here. This is my 1973 Ludwig Superphonic. This is probably my favorite snare out of the whole bunch just because it's the one I've had the longest. Very popular drum. In fact, it is the most recorded snare drum in history, I believe. You can look that up. This is just a, a piece, black nickel shell. I'm chilling there. I haven't really used it much yet, but a friend's let me borrow that. Maybe use that later this year. And right next to it is my 5.5 by 14 one-off aluminum shell snare with gold hardware. Super versatile. And I, I love it that it has the DW throw off. A lot of these drums have uh, a DW throw off. Same with the one down here. This is a one-off custom bronze shell with black nickel hardware that I custom ordered. A little mofo stencil on it. So I call it the mofo snare. Uh, next to it is a custom painted Christine snare drum to look like the front of a 1958 Plymouth Fury. Huge horror movie fan, so that's why I also have just kind of weird things like that laying around, but moving on. My spare parts area, as you might call it. I think every drummer should have one of these areas. Polishes and spare parts and tools. Hi-hat clutch up here. I love the Remo clutches. These things are great. But as you can see, I've just got drawers and drawers full of felts and lugs and tension rods and just any kind of little knick-knacky screw piece you would ever need. It's what drummers do, right? We just end up collecting a bunch of spare parts and things and end up having closets that look like this. Also in here is my 24 inch Sabian ride. This is an amazing ride. I'm not currently using it right now. I just took it off the kit. I go back and forth between it and a 22 inch ride. 
But that ride is super special to me. It's been on some pretty great recordings. And it's another item that I got from the great Tommy Taylor. So uh, moving on over here is my console desk. This is where I go to edit all of my videos. As you can see, this is a vape. That's a bad habit, kids. Don't do it. Cameras I use for recording drum videos, GoPro Hero 7. And over here, these are Canon G7Xs. I usually put one on a tripod. Over here is my camera slider, something I've been using for the last couple years, and I, I love it. I'm using two Scarlet 18i20s, a daisy chain together. One is a second gen, one is a third gen, and it is going out here to all my microphones. Also, it is going over here. This is my desk setup, and we're gonna move on to the main event here. This is my 1991 Ludwig Classic Maple kit in aqua sparkle finish, and I'm gonna move up, and we're going to go around this thing. All right, we're gonna start up front here with Dave. Most of the my favorite drummers are named Dave. You know, Dave Grohl, Dave Abruziz, David Silvera, the list goes on and on, Dave Lombardo. And moving on from there, again, this is a 1991 Ludwig Classic Maple that I received from Tommy Taylor. And this was his first kit that he got from Ludwig as a Ludwig endorsee in 1991. For anyone with a good eye that has watched the Air Clapton Crossroads Festival, the very first one, you may have seen this kit in that video, but now it's mine and I get to enjoy it. So coming around the back, awesome Ludwig Classic Maple Kit. As you can see, I've got two snare drums. These snare drums are brass, hand hammered. One is a four inch depth by 14. The other one is a six and a half depth by 14 snare. Both of these snares sound great. This one's obviously great for taking the snares off and making a, a bit of a timbali like sound. The kit itself is a 14 by 22, an 8 by 12, 13 by 9, and a 16 by 16 floor. Something I forgot to mention as I was in the front of the kit that I really love about this drum set, the rack tom mounts. And these are GPT rims in the alloy finish. Something really awesome about this company is this is actually granddaddy of modern drum mounting systems. The guy that created this company was in fact the first guy to mount drums this way. Predecessor to the modern modern rack tom mounting systems you see on all pro drum kits today. That's it. If you want to know where rims mounting came from, it came from this man, this company right here, GPT Rims. Moving on from that though, as you can see, I have a little bit of an antiquated hardware tom mount problem. Ludwig's modular series from the late 70s through the 80s into the early 90s. It's not exactly the most versatile tom holder. It's great for setting it and forgetting it, and it does not move or go anywhere. All right, moving on. Now, there's so much I just don't even know <laughs> where to start. I hope, hopefully I don't leave anything out. We're gonna go back around the back side of the kit here and I'm just gonna continue on. I think I'm just gonna start and go left to right. I have two side racks. These are curved 46 inch bars on either side of the kit. I chose to go to these because as you can see, I have about, I don't know, 11 things mounted on this side of the kit alone. So if you could just imagine 11 more tripods, it just gets to be impossible. Possible. I started mounting things off of other stands, but it just got to be too complicated and I wanted something a little bit cleaner. These Gibraltar racks are insane for that. This just freed up all of my floor space and it allows me to have a ridiculously enormous setup in a fairly small space. I myself have chosen to go with just about 100% Gibraltar hardware. Pearl Eliminator Redline pedals, as well as the hi-hat pedal. I'm using a blue cam, moving on. So I've covered the snares, covered the kit, covered my pedals, covered the Gibraltar rack. Got an LP tambourine here, Pearl M80 side snare. I love it. I usually have it over here. As you can see here, I've got two cup holders, one for holding my vape, one for holding an actual cup of water. Again, don't vape, kids. And this is the fan I use, Alasco blower fan. <laughs> A lot of people wonder how I, I don't get that fan noise when I'm recording, and I guess I'm just lucky. It, once I start playing, the volume kind of cancels out the sound of the fan. And why do I have the fan? I'm usually in here anywhere from three to four hours, so it gets pretty toasty. So moving on to my throne, this is a Porter & Davies tactile monitor. You can ask any touring drummer out there on the road today. They're going to tell you this is the throne to have. 
Once you have this, you really can't go back. You have to get this. This is gonna take your, your drumming to the next level. This is great for outdoor venues. This is great for e-kits. I'm actually wanting, I actually have an e-kit that I wanna buy another one of these for because it is just so amazing. Symbols. Symbol, symbol, symbols. As you can see, it is symbol city up here. We have symbols for days. A lot of these I will experiment with and take on and off the kit. As you can tell from a lot of my videos, the main staples are gonna be these three crashes, actually these four crashes and that China right there. But left to right, this is a 20 inch Oriental Chinese. I love this. I usually have it over here. Zildjian, a custom hand hammered 19 inch China. We have a 10 inch flash splash. 18 inch A custom fast crash. This is a 19 inch, just A custom regular crash. Uh, these are my 14 inch master sound hi-hats. I have a, a couple of other hi-hats that I like to use, but these are what I like to have with the rest of my A customs. Up here, just a couple of splashes. One is a six inch splash, the other is an eight, both A custom and brilliant finish. Moving over here is my K hybrid splash that I have actually cracked and need to replace now. I still like to use it. Big Dog, this is a 20 inch A custom crash. As I mentioned before, this is my 19 inch A custom hand hammered China. Moving down here, this is an old 22 inch Sabian rock ride that I bought used, very used a long time ago, and it just sounds great. I have yet to invest in getting an A custom medium ride because this one just sounds so darn good. Between that and my 24 inch Sabian ride that I got, I really don't need to buy another ride symbol right now. Just enjoying playing that. All right, and moving back up up here, we have my 18 inch A custom regular crash and a seven inch Zilbel. Behind that, a 10 inch effects. And below that, 13 inch AA Sabian medium hats. Great for an X hat. So that pretty much covers my, my symbol setup. Now we're gonna get into the electronics. Covered my throne. So now I'm gonna break this down for you here. For monitoring, I'm using the Yamaha E8010. As you can see, I've got a trigger there on my kick as well as a trigger on my snare. This just allows for me to hear the drums better in my in-ears. This is a Maxi Mix 8, and what I love about this is it has an aux master bypass, so I can actually run the E8010 into my interfaces for recording, but I can actually filter out the music I'm listening to, so that doesn't get recorded as well. It's just the drums. Just a simple $70 mixer that I bought at Guitar Center. This cable here, plug my phone directly into that, and I'm running a Moises app, which is how I will add in click, count in, all kinds of awesome things to help me nail a drum cover. Running into my interface, my Scarlett 18i20. So that's pretty much what I do for in-ear monitoring. All right, and back out here to sticks. As you can see from these chewed up ones, I'm using Vic Firth, and this is the Rock Series stick. I'm also using Promark stick wrap, kind of gravitated towards these Vic Firth rocks. They just work great for me. All right, back around the front of the kit, we're gonna go through microphones now. This is an Audix i5 I usually use for my side snare. A couple of Sterling condenser mics down here on my hi-hats. Sterling up here for my ribbon mics for the condensers. This is a Guitar Center brand. They get the job done. Up here are some Sure Beta PG56 mics on the two rack toms as well as my Pearl M80 side snare. Back under here, I'm using Audix D4 for the floor tom. Back out here, I am using two Audix D6 mics, one to trigger my Porter and Davies tactile monitor and the other for straight up recording. And lastly, two Shure SM57 mics. You gotta have those. Ah yes, drum heads. We cannot forget drum heads. Remo X14s coated on both my side snare and the main snare. Hazy ambassadors on the bottom side. On my bass drum, I'm actually using, believe it or not, an old school, <laughs> I'm using an old school, new old stock Ludwig Weathermaster bass drum head. They don't even make those anymore. I've got a little bit of a stockpile of those. That to me just is the, one of the best sounding bass drum heads I've ever heard in my life. So I tend to use those. Up here on my rack toms, I'm using, these are vintage ambassador all the way around. Back over here, a vintage ambassador as well on the Pearl M80 side snare. Bottom toms. <sighs> I'm using new old stock Ludwig Ensemble heads. 
the Ludwig Weathermasters, they no longer make. Microphone mounting is a combination of the LP claws as well as just your standard run-of-the-mill pro line mic stands. As far as the cymbal stands themselves attached to the Gibraltar racks, these are Gibraltar's uh, 6000 series no-leg cymbal stands. I also have thrown in a, a couple of smaller Gibraltar boom stands as well. All right, downstairs we have my Roland V kit. Super excited to be utilizing this more for practice, especially whenever I don't need to be making so much noise in the house. As you can see on it, I have a Pearl Eliminator Redline pedal just to match the one I have up in the studio so I can have a consistent feel. I'm excited to see what kind of pathways that this thing can open up for me, but for now, I'm having a blast just using my acoustic drums for making drum covers, but this is great for practice. Let me tell you that. All right, bonus footage time. We're down here in my, what I would call my drum dungeon. This is where I, I store just about everything else that I, I don't readily need right away up in the studio. So as you can see down here, I've got various cases and bags for going out and playing live music. Some of my, uh, my boxes for my V drum kit in case I need to send anything back. Just some extra hardware. Um, as you can see, I've got a bit of a stockpile of the new old stock Ludwig Weathermaster heads, as well as Remo, spare pedal parts there for these vintage bass drum pedals that I have been known to use. These are Rogers Swivelmatic bass drum pedals they used to make back in the 60s and 70s. Just a great feeling pedal. They did not make these in a double pedal back then. This is the bonus storage area where I kind of just let everything chill until I need it. All right, so I get a lot of drummers that ask me, Michael, why do you throw your drumsticks at the end of every video? And that, my friends, is because I take a lot of takes. I don't play every song just perfectly right off the bat, unfortunately, as some of you might experience for yourself. Uh, it takes several attempts to land a take that feels right in your heart and one that you would want to keep. Once I have that take, I will relinquish my sticks and know that that is the take that I want to go with for mixing and editing. When I'm going back through and searching through all of the horrible takes that I did, I will know which one's the right one because at the end I'm throwing my drumsticks. So a lot of my drum videos when I first started this channel have no drum audio on them and the reason for that was I was big time broke. I couldn't afford microphones yet, let alone um, ample space to be able to record my drums. So a lot of my first videos on YouTube, I'm basically miming. I'm playing the song, but you can't hear it. What I am doing is just essentially playing, trying to play note for note what the original drummer played so that you can see that I'm actually playing the song, but you can't hear anything because if I were to try to play any audio from it, it would be so distorted and sound so terrible that you wouldn't want to watch it anyway. But it was a way for me to really get started in the YouTube drum cover community. And now I'm finally to a point where I'm able to record myself, which is something that it took me years to be able to know how to do properly. Um, and get somewhat of a decent sound out of the kit. And also be able to have a drumless track to accompany the drum recording that you're doing. All right, that pretty much wraps up my comprehensive rig rundown and studio tour for you guys. I hope you enjoyed this. I had a blast recording this for you guys and going through everything and kind of geeking out over the equipment I use. If you have any questions, please don't hesitate to drop me a comment below. Anything you guys want to know, uh, if I didn't explain something in great detail, I would be more than happy to do that, or I can make another video later on down the road if you don't think I answered something quite thoroughly. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you're still here, uh, I had, again, a blast. Thank you all. If you haven't already, hit the like button. I will see you guys again really soon on the next drum cover video. Be safe out there and take care of yourselves. Peace.